Good morning, everybody. So uh, hopefully here we're gonna start working on a uh, intro so I can give you guys a cool intro and, and uh, do that into these videos. But uh, I've been watching a lot of YouTube, trying to figure out what type of content is gonna be best for you and what uh, I'm interested in doing. Um, done a lot of Facebook Lives over the years, done a lot of that type of stuff, but uh, as we try to do more on, on YouTube, giving you something. I love aviation. There's gonna be a lot of aviation on here. Uh, one thing that I've noticed that everybody's getting into and everybody is doing is accident reports in aviation. Um, everybody's jumped on that bandwagon. I will not jump on that bandwagon. If somebody has a question about a specific incident, I will give you my opinion. But uh, everybody's jumping on, wants to talk about these, uh, and I guess it gets a lot of clicks and kind of does that. But it doesn't make any sense. We don't know the FAA and NTSB investigate these accidents. Um, we could do some preliminary stuff and we could talk about that. You guys can see it, but we're going to move on. But what I am going to talk to you about today is uh, something I think is very important. I've had a lot of questions about and I want to address. So we're going to talk about the uh, Continental Crankshaft AD. So the original AD or original service bulletin was put out by Continental. Uh, turned into an AD, so it was AD 2023-04-08. Uh, it was a counterbalance uh, issue on Continental crankshafts. So Continental released a, uh, a service bulletin addressing a couple thousand engines that were built uh, regarding uh, failure of some counterbalance weights on there. Um, it grounded a bunch of airplanes. So if you drive a Cirrus or fly a Cirrus, that was kind of a big deal. We kind of saw it there, but really it affected almost every airplane out there that had a new engine. Uh, from Continental out there, about 2,100 uh, engines in total, 2,176 engines in total. So I want to talk to you about what this AD is. Uh, I want to address that, and then I'm actually physically going to show you on a crankshaft what's happening, why it's happening, and going from there. So uh, you can pull it up. Again, the, uh, the, the revised or the amended uh, one is AD-2023-00265-01. Uh, That's the amended uh, AD. So basically what that does is it says, uh, we're not gonna just have a 200 operating hour limit on these, uh, sorry about that, on these, uh, engines but all of them have to be inspected so that's it's a big enough problem i think they've had three or four engines uh fail because of this so we're going to go and address uh that um and it basically addresses every engine from the gitzo 520s io 360s io 520s all models io 550s um, lts io 360s lts io 520s 0470s tsi 360s TSIO 520s, TSIO 550s, TSIO F 550s, and TSIO L 550, my favorite one, liquid cooled 550. So um, they're kind of estimating uh, it's a, a cost to remove one cylinder about 850 bucks to do this inspection. Some of those engines are going to need one cylinder removed, some are going to need two, and some of them are going to need three. They've estimated here about $850 per airplane. I think that's low. Um, they do always put a number in here. I don't know of a shop right anywhere in the country that you can get uh, an engine tore down for $85 an hour, but uh, what do I know? We only run a shop here. So my shop rate's a little bit more than that. Um, they're saying basically everything is grounded until we deal with this. Um, I've got uh, some customers that have uh, issue, have uh, affected engines. Um, you can get a uh, special flight permit, so you can get a ferry permit for this for a one time. Uh, you have to comply with uh, 14 CFR 21.197 uh, and 199 to get that for one time to get to uh, your mechanic that can work on that. So I've got some other things we're gonna talk about. I've got the rules and regs here, but I wanna first go and show you guys what we're looking at, why it's a concern, and go from there. So we'll come around here. I've got some uh, stuff in play. just so happens to work out well. So here is a continental crankshaft, guys. Uh, this is getting ready to go off for overhaul, so don't uh, disregard all the corrosion and everything on that. Now, what are we concerned with? So anybody that hasn't been into an engine or hasn't had uh, the, the opportunity to do a teardown or look at some of this stuff, this is a continental six-cylinder engine. 
This is an IO 470 engine out of a 310. Okay, and they have floating counterbalance weights on this. So you can see that it moves around on here, okay? On this crankshaft. It has four of them on here, okay? Now, how what that counterbalance weight looks like really is it looks just like this. So you can see that, I'll turn it over. It's just a steel piece that slides over, uh, goes right on there, okay? This is held on with a weight. So this is part of the weight as well. These are different weights for different uh, engines. They actually would go right in there and hold that in that uh, counterbalance weight as you look in there and see that. Now we would take a retainer. Okay, so we've got a retainer, it's round just like that. And it goes in that hole. And then a retaining ring goes in there. So if we come up here and we can look, and I'm gonna get a flashlight so you guys can see that. You could see those retainers or clips that we see in there. We would put it in with a clip tool and lock it into that groove on that uh, counterbalance weight. Now, what we're saying or what the FAA and Continental saying is that some of these clips got put in wrong or are suspect, let's just say that. Um, how that happened, I don't know. I haven't read anything, seen anything. Um, if it was a manufacturing process or, or something like that. To my understanding is Continental has a new crankshaft facility in the US. Um, maybe a lot of it's a machine. I mean, I, most of this stuff has to be assembled by hand. So I don't know how that happened. But what we have to do is tear a cylinder off of this crankcase to inspect that all these C-clips are on and this is not gonna come off. If this comes off or one of these, uh, the clips come out, the retainer comes out, and the, the pin comes out, drops out, bounces around the engine. What's gonna happen is one of this or both of these is gonna come up as this is spinning around. That weight is going to catch the crankshaft or catch the crankcase, break the crankcase, and you're gonna have a sudden stoppage on this engine. It's gonna stop right now, uh, which creates all kinds of other problems, potentially uh, destroying an engine mount or, or partial uh, dislodgement of the engine off that aircraft. So this is how that works. It goes on right there, it gets pinned, it gets the retainer, and it gets locked in. Now, a lot of you guys don't know this, and I teach this all the time, of why is this moving around on this crankshaft? Is this wore out? It's actually not. It's how this works. So this is on here, um, and this moves around so it can balance this engine at different RPMs, okay? Um, if some of you guys remember in 09, uh, we had a service bulletin, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit here too, um, regarding RPMs on, on large Continental, six cylinder Continentals to be specific. So they were saying, do not operate a six cylinder Continental, for the most part, any of them, below 2300 RPM. Well, that's because this counterbalance weight is not designed to balance this crankshaft and this engine below that. So it was creating harmonics, um, which in turn were cracking some of the light cases that we saw and having premature failure of, of bottom ends of, of engines. So there's a service bulletin out there a lot of people are not aware of. Um, we can go over that and it kind of goes in that same thing. So I always tell people when they talk about how are we gonna run these engines, where should I run it RPM wise and go from there. Most, now some of you guys, on early model 470s and things have different RPM ranges. I'm gonna use the most generic, an IO 550 Bravo model, typically has a maximum redline RPM of 2700 RPM. And now Continental's released a service bulletin that says 2300 is the bottom. So if you take that spread, 23 to 27, we've got 400 RPM. If we said, well, we wanna go right in the middle to be safe, um, that's gonna put us at about 2500 RPM. Now, maybe your engine and, and prop combination and airframe uh, has a weird harmonic at 25, maybe you're gonna run 2450, maybe you're gonna run 2525, somewhere in there. That makes it pretty happy. These are designed um, from everything I've ever read and everybody I've ever talked to at an engineer and, and at Continental and anywhere else. This engine is designed and these counterbalance weights are designed to run at about 2700 RPM. So these come out and they lock into place as long as you don't have big power changes on that, you can see there's a lot of movement in there. So without having that movement, 
It locks into place as long as we have a steady RPM and it just keeps running and it balances out. We have no weird movements or anything in those engines, no weird harmonics, and it just works. Um, old technology, but it works. It works very well. Very similar to putting uh, what's called true ride in a semi-truck tire. Semi-truck tires are so big, they don't balance them with weights. They actually put a powder or a sandy powder in the tire. When it gets up to speed, uh, that sand dis disperses around that tire to balance that tire out. Same concept here. This will uh, lock into place and uh, take all of the weird vibrations out of this engine and make sure our bearings last a long time. Now, when we get to a, such a low RPM, these will bounce around and it won't balance that. Or massive power changes. So the other big thing that you're doing is if you're doing huge power changes and you feel a little bit of a vibration, I've noticed it more on composite propellered engines um, just because it doesn't have the inertia of that prop and the weight of that prop spinning it, you'll all notice a little bit of a shudder if you do large, quick power changes on that. Um, heavier metal props, you typically don't have that type of a, a shudder. Um, it's just something that I've noticed in airplanes that I fly that have that. Um, but it basically is these counterbalance weights not being able to balance the engine for a period of time. Once it, you stabilize that RPM, these will lock into place and kind of go from there. But yes, this moves around this much. This is normal going from there. It's just how that works. So I, uh, I highly recommend, well, one, we've got over t about 2,100, over 2,000 uh, engines that are affected underneath this. And it's everything. It's IO 360s, uh, IO 470s, O 470s, uh, 520s and 550s. So if it was uh, an engine that you've got from a man the manufacturer, so if you got a, a rebuilt uh, or a new engine from the factory or from air power, uh, your engine very well could be affected, especially uh, if it, you've got it in the last two years. So always uh, check on that. If you have a new engine in it, that engine is, is still great. I, I still think Continental's making the best engines out there. Uh, fly behind a lot of Continental engines. I really like them. Uh, it's unfortunate that something like this happened, but it's good that everybody caught it and kind of how, how and why we're addressing it. But it is just a little clip on that engine. Now, does anybody want to have their engine tore down? No, um, especially when you have a factory engine, but that's what we have to do. So those engines are grounded. We all saw the full panic and, and it, it, you know, it was first brought to my attention by Cirrus. Cirrus grounded their airplanes. Um, trying to figure out how this affected everybody and why it affected everybody. Now that we've gotten more information, I think it was February 23rd was when uh, the FAA released theirs. Uh, of course, uh, Continental released their service bulletin before that. But now we have a clear direction on how to address these, how to fix it, and how to get everybody's airplanes back up and running. I would imagine by now most everybody's gotten uh, that done or, or should be getting it done if you don't have it done. Um, so that's how it works. That's how these, these bounce around. I'm going to go over and I'll, I'll read you a little excerpt out of the, uh, the RPM, the minimum cruise RPM. So this service bulletin is uh, CS Bravo. I should do it all, but CSB 09-11 alpha. Um, the date on this, I think it was 2009, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was 9-25 of 2009 is when it was issued. It was revised 11-12 of 2014. Um, it's a two-page. It's amazing how many people that run these large Continentals. I've never seen this service bulletin. Uh, a lot of people like to pull that back to try to save fuel, but what's happening is that engine's not able to uh, balance itself. Uh, if everybody kind of remembers there in the, the early 2000s, mid-2000s, uh, you know, we had always had the issue with the VAR cranks, uh, and then we started having some issues with the light cases in Continental, and those light cases were um, having cracks. We were seeing more and more cracks on that, so everybody wanted to stay away from the light case in the 520 and 550s. Um, I think that really was a play, personally, so my own personal opinion, no engineering, no nothing, I'm not that smart of a guy, but I think a lot of it had to do with where we were running it. We were trying to conserve fuel, fuel prices started going up, so we were running those engines lower and lower RPMs, and we were getting weird harmonics that weren't able to balance those crankshafts. But if you go on here and look at it, um, uh, on this, almost every engine out there, so 0470s, IO 470s, IO 520s, 
IO 550s, IO F 550s, TSIO 520s, uh, uh, LTT SIO 520, uh, almost everything on here. So look at it. But it says uh, minimum cruise RPM to establish minimum cruise RPM. I mean, it's it's everywhere on here. Engine cruise RPM settings should be no lower than 2300 RPM. Um, so now some of those, some of our, our engines are, are affected or some um, airframes want you to run and, and the POH says to run it in there. So if it is, you can always call uh, Continental and talk to their customer support about that. But uh, it's definitely a good read on that. So. Again, trying to give you guys uh, some some info that's not uh, a crash investigation uh, opinion on mine. I wanted to give you this. I get asked a lot here. We've got customers at this effect, so we're trying to address them. But uh, I wanted to get you this information. Of course, we're still going to be uh, out flying and doing flying videos. We'll do maintenance videos. Uh, I know everybody's jonesing to see the Beach 18 back up and running. I think we're a couple weeks from that. So we'll start getting you a lot of good videos of uh, the Beach 18 on floats doing what it does, water landing. So if you guys have any questions, uh, you can always uh, put it in the comments. You can always message me. Uh, we can go over stuff. If uh, you, you want to know something or have something addressed, we can address that. Uh, put it in the comments. Uh, you know, we'll go from there. So everybody, thank you for watching. Uh, you guys have a great day. And I will uh, get you another video here soon. Later.